Hey, what's going on guys? Danny here, back with another video. And for today's video, I decided that I'll be talking about my top 5 reasons why I'm a PC gamer. So before I begin, I want to first address that this isn't a video of me bashing on consoles or any other gaming platform that you may like. I don't see anything wrong with your personal choice for gaming being the Xbox One or PS4, and there's definitely nothing wrong with someone strictly being a PC gamer. I'm going to be talking about what appeals to me for the PC platform, and why it is my go-to choice for gaming. Now I want to mention that I've been a console gamer for most of my life, but over the past few years, I found myself gradually playing more on my PC. The other reason is that I've always had a big interest in computer hardware. So I'm sure you're probably tired of me rambling on about all that. So without wasting any more time, let's begin with this top 5 list. Number 5. The endless amount of input devices and peripherals. There is an extensive amount of devices that you can use to suit your preference for gaming. The list pretty much goes on and on for what you can use. You can go the traditional route and simply use a keyboard and mouse. If you're someone that likes to play a lot of FPS games, whether it's Counter-Strike, Global Offensive, Battlefield, Rainbow Six, Call of Duty, the keyboard and mouse combo will probably be, probably be your go-to choice over there. For those types of games, aiming with the mouse is just a lot more accurate than an analog stick on a controller. Also, a keyboard and mouse is great for MMOs, RPGs, RTS, and MOBAs because of all the commands that you have to put out. Not to mention that you have custom binds and key macros. Also on the PC, you can use whatever controller you like. If you want to use an Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller, you can do that. Or you can also even use a PS4 controller. These controllers are ideal for many games, such as multi-platform games, sports games, and personally I find myself switching from a mouse and keyboard configuration to use an Xbox One controller. And when I'm playing an action-adventure game, such as Assassin's Creed, or a sports games such as NBA 2K, the controller works just great. So I mean, there's quite a few reasons why I will sometimes plug in my Xbox One controller and use that to play instead of my keyboard and mouse. Another reason why you may want to use a controller is if you want a casu casual couch experience where you can play on a larger display such as your living room TV. Having a mouse and keyboard in your lap feels very awkward and un un uncomfortable as opposed to having a controller. You can even use old controllers such as a GameCube controller, or even go back much further and use an old NES controller, and those might be appropriate to use when you're playing some older games on an emulator. Another reason why I like PC, but more on that later. Yeah, you might need to get an adapter or buy a replica controller that has a USB connector interface, but I mean, it's good to know that the options are out there. Adding to this, you have so many more types of devices available such as motion and virtual reality devices like the Oculus Rift, and you also have these like small touchpads that you can use for games like Osu. I've also seen, seen some really crazy setups from simulator fans, where they have replicated a whole vehicle dashboard to really create a deep immersive environment. So I mean the list just goes on and on, and if I sat here talking about every single peripheral device or input device, then this would turn into a whole separate video. The whole point that I'm trying to get across is that you can use whatever you like to complement your preferences. You're not just locked to this one ecosystem of hardware from one company. Number 4. The game deals. It's cheaper to play on PC, and you get better value for your money. This is one of the major factors as to why I switched to PC gaming. It's a lot cheaper to play on the PC, and you're getting a lot more for your money. Since the PC is an open platform, not really controlled by anyone, you have the freedom to purchase your games from wherever you want. There's always the yearly Steam sales that happen around major holidays such as Christmas, Halloween, summer Steam sales to, I don't know, commemorate the whole summer school free spirit, I suppose. But I mean, the point is, on Steam, the sales can be quite ridiculous, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's amazing to see a new AAA title to be discounted up to 40, 60, or even 80% at times when some of these games had only hit the market for a few months. Along with Steam, you have other websites such as Green Man Gaming, Good Old Games, Origin, and G2A that offer similar sales. And to put the cherry on top, you have Humble Bundle, which literally has the most unbelievable sales. The Humble Bundle is such a broken and OP website where you can get games that cost $20 by themselves and only for and get them only for a few bucks. I recently bought the bundle that had some arcade games such as um, arcade racing games such as Grid 2, Grid Autosport, Dirt. And if I was to buy those games separately, I would have probably paid around a total of 60 to 80 dollars or so, or maybe even more. But instead, I only ended up paying about five dollars. Another similar website is the Indie Gala, where they offer new bundles every day on some sweet indie games, again, for only a few bucks. 
So on consoles, you don't have these opportunities because the only place where you can purchase your games are from retailers such as Best Buy, GameStop, or the actual Xbox Live Marketplace or the PSN service. The other reason why I will say that I find PC gaming to be cheaper is simply because we don't have to pay a monthly or yearly subscription fee to play our own games online. I find the fact that you have to pay 50 bucks a year on top of your internet subscription fee to be total bullshit. And it's not like you're getting an experience that is even worth that price tag. Because I hear so many of my friends that are still console gamers complaining about how many times the servers from PlayStation Net or Xbox Live go down. Now one might say that you get benefits with those subscriptions such as free games, but the thing is there are a ton of free to play games that are available on PC. Now you might not be able to build a performance PC that costs less than a console. You might be able to match the price or you might be able to build one that costs slightly higher, but the point is you're getting a lot more for your money. The machine will outperform a console and be capable of playing games at 1080p at 60fps. The current generation of consoles is unfortunately struggling with the titles where 1080p is not even achieved. They use dynamic scaling resolutions and the frame rate is all over the place, but I'll explain more about the hardware part later. Number 3. The huge game library, backwards compatibility, emulators, more exclusives. The massive and wide ranging game library that is available on PC is something that appeals to me very much. As I mentioned in the fifth reason in regards to which input devices you could use, there's a variety and unique genres of games that you can decide to play from. Playing MOBAs such as League of Legends and Dota was an experience that I never had on co playing on consoles. Apart from MOBAs, there are many other types of games such as interactive story point and click games, real time strategy games, many MMOs, simulators, city builders or tycoons and so much more. Again, like input devices, the list keeps going on and on. A lot of these games felt totally, totally unique and their experience felt fresh. Along with that, you have all these great indie games that may not look always the most visually appealing but there are sure some definitely damn good story driven games out there, and a good example of that is Undertale. The PC just has a huge library with so many exclusives to play from. With the consoles, I found that I wasn't exposed to that ex enormous library of games, and probably wouldn't have had the opportunity to play. So with that said, I really like the fact that I can enjoy most of those same games that I could play on consoles such as first person shooters and action adventure games along with all these other great games but obviously minus the exclusives. I can still play games like Battlefield and Call of Duty, but if I want to take a break and play something like an indie game or go build a city, I can also do that. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was that the PC pretty much has an infinite capability or uh, backwards compatibility. I can enjoy titles back from 2008 such as Fallout 3, go back to 2006 and play The Elder Scrolls Oblivion, or go even further back and still play the original Half-Life. It's really quite sad to see that when a console's life cycle ends, that library of games that probably accumulated on your shelf isn't carried over onto the next system. Yeah, sure, you can always keep the old system and play those games whenever you like, that's fine. But I mean, what about the people that have to sell their old systems to subsidize costs for their new system, and then have to deal with the limited backwards compatibility? It sucks. So that brings me to my next point, which is the fact that you have access to emulators to accommodate for all these older systems you have enjoyed when you were younger, and then you can play your favorite old titles on your PC. I was really happy about having the opportunity to play some of my old favorite titles of the Game Boy Color and Advance on a much bigger screen with an upscaled resolution to make it look a bit more visually appealing. The games felt refreshed and I was able to enjoy them and not have to worry about playing on a dim screen or my batteries running out. One of my biggest pet peeves about handheld systems was that they would always hurt my neck from looking down too long. But that's going off topic, but my point there is that now I don't really have to worry about all those little things anymore. Also, as I mentioned in reason number 5, you can get replica controllers of the NES or, adap or adapters so that you can plug in your old ones and try to create a more authentic experience. One big facilitator to PC gaming is the rise of eSports. I found that because of games like CSGO and League of Legends, I wouldn't have found myself playing so much on the PC, and I'm sure that was the case for many others out there. So on the PC, you have a huge library of games to choose from, including every genre out there and so many more exclusives. You have an infinite backwards compatibility, and you have emulators. You can play so much. Number 2. Mods I really love the fact that we have the ability to mod our games. 
One of the reasons why PC gamers love mods is because it can add so much to a game's vanilla experience. You have so many mods for so many different things, whether you want your game to look more visually appealing or want some cool new weapons. For example, you may have seen how many mods there are for the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. A lot of those mods have really changed up the way that the game looks and there are some absolutely gorgeous ENB texture mods. Like seriously, is this real life? It just goes to show that these that some of those modder, modders out there can outdo the game developers or fill an empty void that might have been left originally. Aside from the amazing visuals, you can go completely crazy and even add the flash into GTA 5. What I also really like about mods is that they allow you to increase the replayability of a game and completely change it from the original experience you had. Something like that is very important for people who can't afford to buy new games every so often. And so from the help of the gaming community, you can spend more hours into a game and not be bored of it, all for free. Another thing that mods are great for is adding useful add-ons and tools into the game. As you're probably seeing from the footage, there are a lot of boxes on the screen that are showing me various and all kinds of information from the time, the map, combat st statistics. All of this wasn't actually included in the game, not even the minimap which I think is an essential for games like MMOs. However, I wasn't worried because I knew that all I had to do was search up a few mods and that would easily take care of the problem. By seeing all these fantastic mods out there, it really shows you how dedicated the gaming community can be and it allows, you, allows one to appreciate that people can take the time to create and add all these great things into a game for everyone else to enjoy. And finally, number one, the better performance, the better graphics, freedom of hardware, complete customization. It's a PC, like what more do I have to say? This aspect of PC gaming, I'm sure is what caters to all the audience out there and is what looks to be the most appealing. You have the complete freedom to choose whatever components you like in your own rig, and have the ability to play at whatever resolution, whatever target FPS you may like. As mentioned before, 1080p is what's most standardized in PC gaming these days, but if you want, you can crank up the resolution all the way up to 1440p or even 4K. So if you want to play at a higher resolution and can afford it, then go ahead and knock yourselves out. Go out you can go out and buy a 980 Ti or a Fury X and enjoy that. You're not just locked down to one resolution, you have the freedom to choose from so many graphical settings in-game. You can still enjoy PC gaming, whatever your budget is. I've seen tons of builds that cost relatively the same as consoles or just a slightly bit higher and perform a lot better. I mean, we're a little over two years in the cycle of the current generation of consoles, and if, if you looked at some of the popular recently, recently released AAA titles such as The Witcher 3, Fallout 4, and Just Cause 3, the performance was just laughable. Some of those games didn't even run at full 1080p and still struggled with hitting 30fps, which I think is just unacceptable. Simply put, you get much better overall performance. You have superior graphics and a higher frame rate. But hey, if you're someone that doesn't really care about new AAA titles and just wants to enjoy some F2 free-to-play games such as League of Legends or Hearthstone, you can do that as well because it doesn't take much to run those games. Twitch titles, as I mentioned before, have become really, really popular. You get to choose what kind of processor you want, all the way to how much storage your PC needs. And if you need to upgrade in the future, that option is available too. It's not like you have to throw out your old system in order to get a new one. You, all you have to do is just swap out some old parts, and then you're good to go. Furthermore, a gaming PC can do a lot more than just gaming because in the end, it's a PC. You can do think, simple things like web browsing, streaming your favorite videos from YouTube or Netflix, and even do some content creation if you like, such as video editing and photo editing. You have all these great communication applications, such as Skype and TeamSpeak. Again, we're going back to the whole freedom and software, uh, freedom of software and hardware argument. So all in all, five biggest reasons why I found PC gaming so much more appealing than any other gaming platform was because of the huge library of games, different kinds of input devices to suit your gaming styles, mods, the fact that you're getting so much more for your money, and the superior performance. To conclude, I'll say that I found myself ha having a lot of freedom on the PC than any other platform, as well, as well as having a machine with so much versatility was a big plus. Will I buy another console in the future? Well, maybe, maybe not. I most likely don't see myself buying a current generation console, because although I do miss some of the great exclusives such as Halo and Forza Motorsport, I can't really justify getting another system for a couple of titles. I'm really looking forward to watching the future unfold in the gaming industry, how the PC market grows, 
what will become of the current generation consoles and their future. And that's pretty much all I have to say guys. If you enjoyed my top 5 list, smash that like button. Leave your thoughts down in the comments section below. Subscribe for more videos like this, and as always, I, ho I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.